Howard, welcome to PerformX. Um, just thanks for having us down and Thank you. excited to preview what you guys have got in store uh, at the show in a, in a couple of weeks' time. Thanks for coming. Um, so just to kick off, um, obviously, Pilates and reformer Pilates has seems to have absolutely exploded uh, since the pandemic and it's no longer something that's just celebrities are doing but actually finding its way to, to mainstream clubs. Um, for someone that's never heard of reformer Pilates, can you give us a bit of a lowdown? Yeah, sure. So uh, Pilates, you're right, has exploded over, over probably since the pandemic, um, which is peculiar because Pilates has actually been around for decades, since, since the 1920s. So it's not a new, it's not a crazy, it's not a new type of workout. Um, and it's, it's tried and tested over, over many years. So Joseph Pilates originally developed the concept of uh, movement and exercise he bringing in apparatus that we now know as the reformers and um, developed it originally. It's interesting, developed it originally for war veterans who had been injured during the war um, to help to rehabilitate them. So it's kind of almost um, originated from a rehabilitation perspective as opposed to purely a fitness and exercise um, uh, basis. So it's, it's developed, it's evolved over many years to what we know today as Pilates. Um, reform was a really important part of the whole Pilates um, methodology. And you have two types of Pilates. You have um, the more classical Pilates, which is perhaps more true to the teachings of uh, Joseph Pilates. But it, there are hybrids now. It's developed and it's evolved um, with the evolution of reformers now We're using different materials. Originally, they were wood. They're now bringing in other materials like aluminium, and other alloys, and um, making it, and it's it's opened up and made it more accessible to a broader market. Brilliant. And what do you see as the kind of? I mean, you touched on it there, but what do you see as the key benefits for um, a gym's clients in in getting into reformer Pilates? From a user's point of view, um, I, the, the the benefits are, are huge, uh, and especially it's in in today's uh, environment where we're. We're hunched over more. We're at a computer, a laptop, looking down, uh, engrossed in what we're doing. Where then, when we're a break, we're perhaps on our phones, using our mobile devices, um, and our whole lifestyle has become perhaps less functional. Yes. Um, and it's become a bit more sedentary. Yes, we exercise, but we we it's in slots. We exercise, we work out. It's quite linear. We do a workout. We follow whatever principles we're following at the time, and then we. We're back to our sedentary lifestyle, sitting in the car, hunched over, hunched over on a laptop, as I said. So Pilates and reformer Pilates, um, it helps to put that right. It helps to fix the body posture. It helps to strengthen the muscles that have become weak through the type of lifestyle I just explained. Um, and so it, the benefits are huge from um, improving your strength in in muscles you perhaps wouldn't normally use necessary through conventional workouts. Um, and it improves flexibility, it improves mobility. We're all getting older. We're all, ever, we're all living longer. Um, and because of that, our bodies are starting to wear out. And if we don't look after them, we don't take care of them, we're gonna live long lives that perhaps might not be as comfortable as we might hope they're gonna be. And me for one, the last thing I want is to live another 30, 40 or 50 years and be in pain and be in discomfort and have to spend ages getting out of bed in the mornings and straightening up. And, and if I'm taking the dog for a walk, I'm, and my back is aching, my knees and my joints are aching. So I want to live a good rest of my life. I don't want to live a healthy rest of my life. I want to be pain free. And Pilates definitely helps with all of those, in all of those areas. It's perhaps a less about how I look, how people are looking now. It's a bit more about how people are feeling. I think that's becoming a really important growth in the industry. Nice. And that kind of, um, yeah, like you said, the, the sort of holistic angle to it, but also it can quite nicely complement your other styles of training, right? It can sort of um, give them a bigger picture and support, like perfect those movements where, where people might have, might have problems sort of thing. It will help in everything. So but it's the kind of thing you can, you can do a reform workout every day. You can do a reform workout and you feel great afterwards. You genuinely, it's almost kind of like the feeling you have after you've been swimming. 
You know when you feel kind of loose, your body feels good, mm. it doesn't feel beaten and battered. Yep. I've, I, you know, certain types of training I've done in the past, yes, I've enjoyed them, yeah, I feel they're beneficial, but I also kind of wonder if I beat myself up a bit too much sometimes. I never feel like after done a reformer workout, I just feel much better, much looser, much more mobile, much more, um, it, my body feels much more balanced. And that helps with everything else in life, whether you've got another regime, whether you're doing a sport, which is why it's so big in a lot of elite athletes now are using Pilates and reformers to help strengthen themselves and their bodies in general for the sports that they're participating in. So, um, yeah, it can help in every walk of life or if you just, just want to be able to look after the kids and, and have some energy to take care of day-to-day life. So, performer Pilates has boomed in recent years and it's now become sort of becoming sort of a staple part of a lot of key cities and it's even part of new sort of third space builds as we've seen in mm-hmm. the recent Wimbledon one. Um, why would you put that rapid growth down to? I think it's a number of factors. Um, I think Pilates has always been around. Reformers have always been around. It's an industry in its own right. It's, a, it's been a strong industry in its own right, but it's not been necessarily an integral part of the what we would know as the traditional health and fitness industry um the fitness industry we know is dynamic there's always we're always looking for the, something new we want to keep it alive we want to keep moving forward which is brilliant and that's the industry has been like that since since it, it first you know since day dot so um we look we are looking for new concepts new training techniques so obviously we're open to uh to new innovations this isn't a new innovation, but it is new to the fitness industry. Um, I think there's a number of factors, which includes the evolution of the equipment. The equipment's more accessible now. Right. It, it's, it's easier, perhaps, to use. It's less complex. It's more affordable now. And I think also the education is a key part of this, that um, you don't have to be to, do, to be able to deliver training uh, and, and teach reformer workouts in a group class setting which is definitely where we see a big part of the growth you don't have to go on a 12 month it quite what what might be quite unaffordable for a lot of instructors and teachers course which which is a huge commitment so there are now training education programs that are more suited to group exercise on a reformer that has some basis of Pilates and foundations of Pilates but it now blends with fitness workouts so there's a really nice blend and you get the best of both um, so I think that's that's been a key factor and then I think there's a whole lifestyle where we are in the world since the pandemic this has really taken off and I wonder how much the pandemic has turbocharged Pilates and people's people's motivation to take better care of themselves the no pain, no gain mantra um, and, and that philosophy, you know, work hard, work out hard and sleep, don't sleep, you know, we'll do that when we're really old or, you know, those kind of maybe now the seen as maybe older, mm. outdated Dated. philosophies. Now people are in more into certainly, I want to look after myself, I want to feel well, I want to take care of me. I want to look after my, myself inside. I want to take care of my mental health. I want to take care of my physical health. Um, and it's not just about beating myself up. Um, and so there's, there's a market that's looking for this. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a real nice meeting of, of, of both equipment, training, and I think an objective that people are now looking to take better care of themselves. And on that note, who are the kind of core clientele that you see doing a, a Pilates class? Well, it's, it's really varied. Um, it definitely came from a female perspective, so, so it's always has traditionally been more female bias than male, not exclusively, but more female bias. Um, and I think that's still the case. It's not 50-50. It's probably more dependent on the location, dependent on how long the studio has been operating. Um, anything from sort of 70 to 80% female up to 95% female. What, I find, what we find does happen is the early adopters, the first people to show an interest are, are women, f- females, um, and they, they eventually drag their husbands, their partners, their spouses, 
um, into into a class and re- almost sometimes reluctantly dragged in and and really find that they enjoy that as well. So we're getting classes that are now much more balanced in terms of sex, um, but it's still predominantly a more female. But it's any age. It's a real broad ra- age range. Um, that the the sort of the more mature market enjoys working out because it's a way they can work out without, as I said, without uh, without risking any injury. It's an exercise that can help them to stay mobile and to stay stay feeling healthy um, for longer as they start to age. Um, but it's also very much trending at the moment. A lot of the younger sector now are really getting into Pilates, and you know there's. There's, it's been no doubt helped along by the Kardashians and, and various different celebrities of YouTubers that have really hooked into this and, and enjoy working out on reformers and have promoted themselves through, through those type of exercises. And it's, it's great fun. It's a really good workout. It's really enjoyable. And it's, and it's actually really, genuinely, really addictive. One of the key, one, one of the key take-homes for me is, on this is, is the, the impact on retention as well. People, they're very interested in Pilates. They're very interested in reformer workouts. They hear about it. They see it. They want to try it. Hmm. But the impact for me on, on the retention is, is like I've never known anything in the health and fitness sector that retains customers as well as this type of workout. Uh, have you got a um, case study or an example that you can sort of dig into there? Bit of a... Well, we run two studios yeah. ourselves. We set, we set, uh, we're in Reform in, yeah. in Cambridge. Yeah, thank you. Um, and we also we set up our first studio, which was in Castor, in, in just outside Peterborough, just north of Peterborough. Um, it's an education centre for us, so we deliver, deliver trained education for teachers, um, and it's a showroom for us at the same time in a working studio. So we know firsthand as operators as well as as well as equipment suppliers. Um, what the impact is for members and for customers and the usage profiles and we've operated health clubs for many years in the past it's it's always been a battle and it's going to be a continual battle to retain retain members you you have 100 join and 105 leave and you're <laughs> you, you feel we've had a great month but five more have gone than than have been uh, a, a bought, bought in what we find is with 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 the reformer studios that we're having a much, much lower dropout rate, like seriously a much, hugely much lower dropout rate. So we don't have to attract lots more customers in because we're not having to replen- replenish the ones that are dropped out. And that tells you that there's something good about this. If people mm-hmm. are wanting to keep doing it, they're getting addicted to it, they're not dropping out. Um, and our fees aren't cheap. You know, we're, we're, we're high, we, we charge high-end prices um, and... It's um, it's certainly not impacted the customers. They they, as I said, they're addicted to it. Yeah. What do you think is co- What do you think are the key factors causing that sort of stickiness? I think it's probably a, a number of factors. You've got to have the right teachers. Um, we've been careful. I think that's a key thing. You must have the right instructors and teachers. Um, I would say also, actually, these instructors and teachers, it's their favourite class to teach right. of everything they teach. And this is all genuine. It's a, 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 you know, when we speak to instructors, they're as obsessed as the customers. That's a really good starting point for us. Yeah. So, so the stickiness to this, why? I th- as I said, there's, there's a number of factors. I think it's not... It sounds like a, almost a contradiction. You do get really good results from this. If people aren't getting results, they're probably not going to do it because there's other things they could be doing with their time. So you do get very good results in the way you feel initially and then in the way that your body changes mm. and changes shape, um, in your posture, in the way you, you present yourself. So I think that's an important one. It's also, I think it's a tough workout, but it's not so tough that it's demoralizing. Mm. You know, sometimes you have a workout and it's like, God, I, I killed myself in that workout. It was really tough. And you dread the next one because it's so tough. It's not that. It's the workouts. We, we operate, um, our studio, we operate 40-minute workouts. 45 minutes is more than enough. And you get to 30 minutes and you're not looking at your clock saying, I wonder when it's going to finish. It's over before you know it. So it doesn't take up a huge amount of your day. Yeah. But you get really good impactful results in a, in a condensed period of time. That probably is helpful. And I think the dynamic of having a group exercising with other people, like-minded people in that kind of environment, I think that's really helpful. I think we all know that if you're exercising in a group, it's much more of a supportive community 
than if you're just going down and doing it on your own. And when you yeah, wait to meet other yeah. people down there, you see other people, it becomes very sociable. And the social element, especially during lockdown, you know, it's what people are, it's important to people. So um, I think that, that there's sort of a number of factors that make this work. Yeah, sure. And um, digging into that a bit and what's the, what is the model? Do you do, is it strictly membership or do you do pay as you go or how does it work? Okay, so for our studios, we have, uh, a, you can pay for a drop-in session, come and try it. You can do a five-pack, 10-pack class. Yeah. So yep. you, you, you pay for the, the pack of sessions that are, have a limited expiry date. And then you, uh, we have a membership option as well. Nice. So nice. we've got options for for different uh, different types of customers. Some people come to us and they're also a member of a health club somewhere else. Yeah, so it's going to supplement yeah. your work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of that, which is great. Yeah. Um, some people, this is all they'll do. And yeah. They, they will never do anything else because they're, you know, in their minds, they're never going to do anything else because this is what, this is their thing. This is what they enjoy doing. Yeah. So um, nice. They're the options here. Nice. And if someone was asking, like if someone had a concern saying, um, is this a phase, is it a, like a fad kind of thing, what, what, would you, what would you say? Percy, I don't think it's a fad at all. Um, you know, these are tried and tested concepts. The movements, the principles are decades old, mm. 19, back to the 1920s with Joseph Pilates. And all of the workouts that are developing and evolving, um, and there's some really good creative um, things going on in the industry now with organizations like FSA. There's, there's lots of companies out there that are being really experimental and bringing in other apparatus to complement the reformers. And I think the, the evolution of, um, of Pilates has, although it has evolved, the concepts and the principles have remained the same. So it's still the same foundations. I'm not sure why this, I can't think of a reason why this would, air, would not be here for, to stay. I don't see this being a fad. And do you want to dig into that a little bit, which we spoke about off camera and how Pilates has evolved into, I guess, what you're modern, like you're seeing in places like FSA compared to the, the, the classic? Yeah, so you have, you almost have this, it's kind of two areas. One is there's the classical Pilates, which, rec which is very, very focused on movement it's, it's, it's intense um, and you need to have quite a number of qualifications and experience in order to be able to deliver that kind of training and education. A lot of the equipment is wood-based um, so it's a di and, and there are lots of different types of apparatus you could put together in a small, I would kind of almost want to say circuit but that forms part of a workout um, and then you have the reformers, which um, again, there are classical reformers, wooden classical reformers, Cadillacs, big contraptions that look a bit scary. Um, but you also have now an evolution of more mainstream reformers that are more easier to use, more easy for customers to, to, um, to exercise on under the instruction of a, of a good teacher. And what has evolved now is, is group reformer workouts mm. so from a commercial point of view it's easier to monetize because you can bring in our studios what 20 25 reformers in a studio you can have one or two instructors it's not pure pilates in that respect because it could you couldn't do pilates at that level for so many people it's it's much more focused but you can do a workout on a reformer with found with a foundation of pilates movements yeah but also combine it with uh, fitness movements and exercise people will recognize. We, we come off the reformer and you can do some exercise off the reformer and you can go back on it again. There's, there's things like a, what's called a jump board, which is a platform you put at the end of the reformer that you can use. So you can adapt the reformer a little bit as well to, um, to give you variety throughout the workout. And, and that becomes then more of, a, more of a mainstream workout that's a bit more intense in terms of cardiovascular, mm -hmm. it's a bit more intense in terms of it's, it's a bit more of a hit training workout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, it, but you've got the foundations of Pilates in as well. So you've got the best of both worlds. Yeah, yeah. Which again, as you said, where people, this becomes their only discipline or they only come to this studio, you can have a bit more of a varied class. So they're not just doing strictly Pilates, but they're, you, are, you are kind of covering off the whole basis sort of thing. Exactly that. One of my concerns when we first opened our first studio in, in near Peterborough, is the workout is brilliant 
it, it's it's a really nice good way to work out in a group setting with with the dynamic that you get with a group on reformers i was pretty sure that people would come in and really enjoy the workout and i know they would because we'd all also as a sales as a company that, that distributes equipment we see what's happening we saw the very very latest thing is we see what the the most creative mm. companies out there are doing because we're supplying them with equipment and and I kind of was, so I, I figured this is going to be a good show site for us, a good uh, education center for us. And, I, and, I, and at the same time, I'm, I'm, I was pretty confident the reformers would be well, well utilized. I was just a little bit, my only question was, what's, are people going to get bored with this? Are they going to, because it's quite, it's one set of equipment, yeah, it's quite, yeah, yeah. exercise after exercise after exercise, are they going to get bored with it? And it's been completely the opposite. And what I realized as, as we've evolved the last two years is that um, actually there's every instructor brings something different to the table. They, they all teach in a slightly different way. They all put their own kind of character, personality, and salon to it. There's a thousands and thousands of exercises. I've been working out now on, on reformers for the last, our studio for the last two years. They're still bringing out new exercises I've never done before. So you, you don't feel like you've been there, seen that, done that. Um, and it is genuinely addictive. So with our main theme for Performex 2024 focused around commercializing recovery and, and training for longevity, how do you feel in form of Pilates can boost clients' like long-term health results? I think Pilates is kind, it's a kind way to work out for your body. It's, it's, not, it's intrusive, but it's not intrusive. It works muscles that help you in day-to-day -day life. Um, you, can, you can do reformer Pilates or reformer workouts every day. Um, there's not many exercises where you can you know, perhaps swim in, where you could do it every mm. single day and and not feel like you need a rest day. Right. So I think that's the important one that you can do it regularly. And we all know the more regularly you do it, what happens? You're gonna you, you get more addicted to it. You, you the more often you exercise, the more you want to exercise. Um, so I think that's that's certainly been a, 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 an important factor in this. And I think. At the same time, we're, we're, our lifestyles, perhaps nowadays even more so than ever, yeah. are the, we're hunched over desks, we're hunched over laptops, we're, we're heads down on the phone, we're perhaps in the evening sitting on the sofas watching our Netflix programs or whatever. We're not as mobile and as active functionally as we once were. Yeah. And we can exercise there's lots of different ways to exercise, but Pilates and particularly reformer Pilates, it sets your body right. It puts you straight where your body should naturally be. Right. And I think that's really important because that then makes you feel well inside. And sometimes it's a bit subliminal. You can't quite put your finger on it, but you just feel like you're standing more upright. You feel like you're in better condition somehow. Right. You feel like you're not punishing yourself quite so much after an mm -hmm. exercise. And it's a pleasant, a more pleasant way to exercise. The flow of the movements, the flow of the exercises, they're set in a set way to help make the workout a comfortable, enjoyable workout. You don't have to be fit to start doing Pilates. You don't have to be really flexible. You know, a lot of people think, you know, I've got to be flexible before I start this. I've got to be quite fit or I've got to be a female to do this. If I, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Or, but there are misconceptions that we see um, com coming into when people come into our studios. Um, and actually, they're, they're misconceptions. What are the other sort of barriers that come up that you, that you get? It's going to be too much money. It's expensive. Um, that's a factor. It's, as I said, it's, it's female. It's, it's, uh, it's it, is it like, is it a bit like yoga? Right. It's yeah. completely different to yoga. Yeah, yeah. If you ever mention yoga to Pilates or Pilates to yoga, it, it, it's a subject you probably, probably want, want to steer clear of. So, <laughs> um, yeah. And I think, um, I think it's it's you know you have to be flexible you have to be you have to have a really strong core to do mm. Pilates, and everyone can start out from right. a beginner's point. Very scalable from you're very very scalable. Yeah. So what makes peak Pilates different, and what's your USP? Well, I think Gym Kit UK is a distributor for Peak in the UK, so we've been representing Peak for over ten years now. Um, we've got a really good infrastructure in place for supporting our customers so we have uh, we have parts in stock um, we have reformers and equipment peak equipment in stock in our own warehouse we have our own insulation team so there's our team gonna, who can install 
and we also have our own service engineers, our own employed service engineers that can do the servicing and support after. Um, and I think that's very important because we're local to the UK and we can provide that full support package. In addition to that, we run education as well for Peak. So we have our own master trainers that are employed by us, full-time master trainers that can deliver Peak education. So we can offer a full package. So we, if, you, if you have a studio and you'd like to set up equipment through uh, reformers or, Pilat or Pilates equipment, we have, we have our account managers who can help you to design the studio, help, help to set it up, um, explain the, what mix you might want to have for your customer base and, the, and explain about the layout, how much equipment you can have in. We can assist with finance at the same time and right the way through from the, well, we, need to, we need now to train our staff up, we can help with the education and as well as then the, the very important part of all this, the installation, delivery and the after sales service. So that sometimes gets forgotten about, gets remembered after but can, can be easily forgotten about um, during that whole interesting initial uh, sort of sales purchase cycle. Um, and I think also we've got working showrooms we can take customers to. They can come and do a workout. They can try um, a fit core workout, which is developed by Peak Pilates. Um, and it's, it's a unique workout to Peak. It's a group exercise workout and... Uh, we, we can educate and train people to become uh, teachers in fit course. They can deliver a group exercise workout on reformers um, and it's, it's supported by PEAK. So um, you know, we, we have got a really good full package, a comprehensive package, um, and we're happy to share our experiences in, in what we've learned over the years in running studios ourselves at the same time. Yeah. And on that point of people being able to test it out, can we give a little bit of a spoiler of what you're up to at Performec? Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm glad you asked that. It's important one. Um, so we, we're going to be running, we've got a, a large studio room at Performex. We want to make it an exciting, interactive, um, dynamic area. So we're, we're going to bring in a, a, a set of reformers, uh, fit uh, reformers they're called which are more the studio based styled reformers our team are going to be coming down to 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 run sessions to run classes we're going to almost operate it like as if it was a studio so people can come in who perhaps have heard about pilates and particularly reformer pilates maybe have never seen a class they can come in and they can actually see a class in action so they can get a feel for the kind of vibe that it can create the 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 the, the, the type of exercises how they're performed and the general atmosphere of of what can be achieved in a class setting if anybody wants to come and try a class they can book on in advance we'd love them to come and try it once you tried it i think it's a much easier once you try the workout um to to really appreciate it and i think there's a lot of people out there that have seen this but don't really know what it's about and i think this is a, um, and perhaps it might become a bit awkward to ask the question well what is it i don't want to look stupid so and perhaps i should know this is a great opportunity to come and have a look and have all your questions answered. So we'll have a team on site who are going to be teaching and also a team on site who are going to be able to explain the benefits and of, of the different types of equipment that we offer. Um, why do you think it's so important for an ambitious fitness professional or leader to attend something like Performex? Well, Performex is, is, is going to be, a, I'm, I'm, we're super excited, it's going to be a fantastic event. And I think we all have a responsibility to keep up to date. The industry is moving along so fast, it always has. Um, you, you know, you, if, you, if you go on holiday for a week and you come back and things have changed and it's, it's almost like the industry, something new is out. So I think it's really important to keep in touch with what's going on in the industry. There's some fantastic, I think probably everybody knows, if you know anything about the industry and the events that are going on, I think probably everybody knows that this is the event for really good for education. There's some fantastic speakers, some really top quality presenters. And I think that's going to be a really key factor here. And that is probably part of what's attracting a lot of the, um, the, the equipment suppliers, manufacturers, because it's bringing in the right people, the right kind of audiences who are interested and open to new innovations and, and new concepts. Leveling up. Sort of like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Leveling up. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Sure. No, brilliant. Brilliant. So, yeah, thanks for having us down, Howard, and really excited to... Uh, have you up Formex in a few weeks time great looking forward to it can't wait thanks thanks great. a lot
we've been joined by Christy, Peak Pilates Master Trainer. Um, if you could tell us a little bit about the Peak Pilates education. Yeah, so um, Peak Pilates, they have um, like their comprehensive education. Um, but what they've done now is they've developed this FitCore program. Um, and FitCore is a pre-choreographed routine and there's different apparatus that you can use. So you could do fit core reformer, fit core chair, or fit core mat. So we're going to be um, demonstrating the fit core reformer classes at um, PerformX. And it, yeah, it's pre choreographed and it's really bringing the fitness world together with the Pilates world. So you'll see the classical um, Pilates exercises, but it will also be sprinkled with some of the fitness moves as well. Brilliant. And how long is that course? How, how, how does someone go about it? So doing? the course is brilliant because um, reformer classes are obviously like booming at the moment. Um, and this is really, really niche because there actually isn't any training out there at the moment which can allow fitness professionals or people from a, a non-Pilates background to be able to lead a group reformer class. Um, at the moment, you need to be like a level three trainer or sorry, a level three Pilates teacher to be able to access reformer training. So what FitCore has done is he's developed this program, this class that allows fitness professionals, Pilates teachers, anyone who's got that sort of level two background to be able to come and enroll on the course. And the fitness people, what they find is that they learn a lot about how to use their core, you know, they become a lot more educated in like how to move properly. And even the Pilates teachers who are using like leading mat classes or doing one-to-ones, it really brings their teaching to life. It's a very hard class to lead and um, we give them the skills to be able to command a class. Uh, what do you tend to find students are most surprised by um, once they've been on one of the courses? Um, both really. I mean, when I've trained Pilates teachers and they obviously are experienced and they know, um, you know, they, they, they know how to teach the exercises, it's actually, um, making them talk less. So Pilates teachers like to teach a lot more and this is where it becomes a little bit more fitness. So, you know, when they lead a group of former class, it's getting the class moving, getting them into position and then teaching them how to use their core and engage all of their muscles. Um, whereas obviously the fitness professionals, they may, they may think that they know how to use the core. Um, but after doing the course, they really do understand how to use the core. So not only do they learn how to lead a reformer class, um, the skills that they learn from the training will really, really deepen their, um, teaching in other areas as well. And wh why would this course appeal to a fitness professional? Yeah, I mean, like, as you can see, um, you know, there's so many reformer workouts um, trending and growing in popularity. Um, and it might be that the fitness professional, it do they don't really want to go down the Pilates route. Um, or they may think that they don't want to go down the full certification. So what FitCore is really good at is building that bridge. So, you know, they can do online study and then come onto the course where we teach them all the skills and lead a reformer class. And then suddenly their interest is more, you know, they've got a little taste of Pilates. Um, so, yeah, like it's really just that bridge between fitness and just getting that extra like depth that they can bring to their their clients. But maybe in the future, that's where they want to streamline their work. Brilliant. And why do you think Reformer Pilates is booming so much? I just think it's an exercise that everyone can do. Um, you know, it's it's low impact. There's no stress on the body. Um, it's very kind to the body, but it does get results. Um, you know, we've seen loads of people like shaping up. Um, you see the sports professionals. It's really good for um, injuries, rehab um, is enhancing performance it's really an exercise method that is accessible for everybody and in reformer classes you can have like a 25 year old working out with a 65 year old it's appealing more to men now and I just think the feeling of like being stretched having the mobility you know using your core it it's leading to like long-term exercise and especially as obviously you get older and maybe you need to change your exercise habits 
but it's so challenging, um, but really therapeutic at the same time. Brilliant. Well, looking forward to having you down at Performex. Yeah, can't wait. <laughs>